What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, I'm gonna give you a personal tour of my dive locker here at the house. I've showed you in the past how I store gear at the shop and how I store gear in my truck, but I've never really walked you into my personal dive locker to show you how I stow gear there. And what I'm gonna do is kind of walk you through what I currently am using um, and how I store it. If you guys got any suggestions, put it down in the comment section below of how I can make this better. But I can tell you over the last 30 some years, this has really worked good for me. So with that being said, let's jump in today's video and uh, I'll show you my personal dive locker. So of course we're going to start with my truck. You guys have seen my truck in plenty of videos. This is where I store gear when I'm traveling and it works good. It's just a F-150, nothing fancy about it, but it does have a camper shell. And of course I can put all my dive gear in there when I travel. And so I really, really like that. Moving on over into the dive locker itself, you'll see there's different parts of it. This is where we hang stuff. This is where we store stuff. And then this is where we work on stuff. And it works really, really good the way I've got it laid out. Like I said, if you guys see something that I could do better, please let me know. Because not only is our channel here to help you guys learn, I love learning from you in the comment section as well. But let's go over to the workbench. No workbench would be completed without a TV. And yes, I watch Sea Hunt when I'm out here working on scuba gear. So it comes in really handy for me. But just typical Craftsman toolbox, this has all the same identical tools in it that the toolbox at the shop does. So if I need to work on something at the shop, I can bring it home, work on it here, and just you know go without any hiccups. Starting up top here in the shelves, I have my Ocean Reef full face mask. This is the space extender mask. I use it for public safety diving and salvage work. Coming on down, this is just a spare flashlight. It's a D500. It's actually a video light, but it actually works really good for search and recovery if I'm looking for a small item. This here is my main go-to camera. This camera here is the Intova Connects. Now, Intova is no longer in business, but they still made some of the best action cameras or underwater action cameras. And I use this guy. I'll either mount it directly to my mask or I'll mount it to my helmet, and it works really really well now there is another reason i really enjoy this mask or this camera which i'll show you here shortly it's got a live feed uh section here so i can plug a screen in and you can see exactly what i'm seeing underwater uh through a live feed so i really like that whether i hardwire it and drop the camera in or hardwire it while i'm wearing it i really like that feature built into it so that's why i still use it Coming on down is my landing pad. Now the landing pad is a changing mat and I really, really like that changing pad. Um, if I've got wet gear, I can stand on it and change and pull up the wet gear in it. Or if I'm changing an area where there's mud and stuff like that, I can use it as well. And it just keeps my clothing dry, it keeps my clothing clean and keeps my wetsuits and dry suits and things like that clean as well. But moving on up, of course, this is just a box for my DCTS canister light from Mares. Nothing fancy there. I have a uh, sport diver housing here from Sea Life. This is brand spanking new. Um, they actually sent me this light to test, and I've been testing it out. See what I think so far. I'm very, very impressed. Basically, it fits all iPhone models. But moving over, this is my screen, my digital playout screen. This is what we do live feed video on. So I can plug my camera in, whether it's hardwired to me or hardwired straight to the camera, drop it in water, and we have live feed video from what's going on underwater. I really like that. It comes in handy if I'm in on an operation or something like that. That, people can see exactly what it is I'm doing underwater. Two of my four primary lights, I have the DCTS canister light here from Mares, and then I also have a brand new Comfort Zone Scuba. This is the Dive Master model. It comes with a Goodman style handle. I think it's 34 or 3700 lumens, something like that. It's got several hours runtime. So these are my overhead environment lights, and if I really need to reach out and touch somebody, I can do that with those as well. I do have a series of backup lights, which we'll go over briefly, but those are my two primaries. I also have two Land and Sea models from comfort zone scuba unfortunately they're not here to show you they're currently at the shop so moving on down is the charging ports i've got several different chargers here um, and spare batteries as well that's what powers those lights and my backup lights as well moving on over this is my surface comms for my full face mask this is what we use for public safety diving and for salvage work and it's nothing fancy, it's just a surface comm unit from Ocean Reef. Everybody says, well, why don't you use the box model? Why do you use this? And it's primarily, it's for private conversations. So if I wanna have a private conversation with somebody, I can and not the whole surface hear about it, especially if I'm retrieving a body or something like that on a public safety dive, I can radio up and say, hey, target's found, please remove the family before I bring the body up. So that's why I really like that. Moving down, just got a thing of cleaner here. I love Pal Palau and I have two dive computers. This is my primary, it's a Mares Quad Air and a Mares Smart Air. Now the Smart Air is my daughter's. 
the quad air is mine now don't let it confuse you yes they are air integrated models that means it will read your pressure however we don't use it that way we actually turn both systems off to where it's non-air integrated because we both use pressure gauges with our reg sets but that's the two computers that me and my daughter use um, I've got just a few little weights here. The small denomination weights is perfect for both freshwater and saltwater and for every suit that I own and for the suits that my daughter owns as well. But this is by no means all the weights that we have. These are just the ones we keep here. I have a whole fleet of weight at the shop as well. I've got a spare cutting tool here. This is a ceramic line cutter from the Mars XR line. This will actually be going on my daughter's BC. I just haven't got it installed yet. I have two spare low pressure MyFlex hoses here. These are for my dad. I'm actually building him a custom side mount reg system and those are going to be going on his. Uh, one's for obviously his BC inflator, the other one's for his dry suit, so that's why they're out. I haven't got around to getting that built yet, but he's taking a side mount course here very soon, so I've got to get it built for him. This is one of many of my backplate and wings. This is actually a Mares soft plate backplate and wing, and this happens to be the third soft backplate and wing from Mares I've owned. One of the downsides to being a scuba instructor is a lot of times if I don't have something in stock and I'm wearing it and my customers really want it, well then I'd simply take it off my back and sell it to them. So this is my third soft plate backplate and wing that I've owned from Mares. I just haven't got a chance to put it together yet. But you can see I've got all the accessories here ready to install, ready to get adjusted for me. This is a 22 Two pound bladder. I really liked a 22 pound bladder. This is uh, one of three that I currently own with 22 pound bladders. The other one has a 34 pound. Jumping on down, this is just a small little uh, preview of the tanks that I own. These are just the ones I keep here. I have a slew of side mount tanks. They're all aluminum 80s and they're all set up identical. You'll see they all have left and right hand valves because I use bungees when I side mount dive. Now currently they all got air in them but they are set up for nitrox as well. I actually have four steel 80s. I've only got two here. The other two's at the shop. Now, I used to use steel 100s all the time for salvage work, and I've kind of jumped down to the steel 80s. I really like them. They're more, they're smaller, more compact. Um, they keep me a little bit more agile, so if I need uh, a little bit more movement underwater, they work great. And I'm an 80s fan anyways, not just 80s music, but 80s um, cylinder-wise, so they give me plenty of air based off my sac rate. That little guy in the corner there should look very, very familiar to you. That is the aluminum 53 that we just used in the gear test. That is my daughter's 53. She also owns a 63 that stays at the shop. And then I also have two personal pony bottles. I have a 30 cubic foot for public safety and salvage, and I've got a 40 cubic foot for deep dive and uh, tech dive and stuff like that. But that's kind of the tank fleet there. We're going to move on over to the wall because I've got a slew of equipment to go through here. Um, we'll start here at the bottom and work our way up. Pelican boxes galore. We are big, big Pelican fans. That's my daughter's Pelican Air and it's virtually set up the same way my Pelican box is. Mine's the Protector Series. This is a 1650. Uh, Hers is the Pelican Air 1615. But we both have these organizers in our box where it keeps everything nice and neat and organized for us. Just briefly go through mine spare snorkel mass cleaning compass this is defog pocket mass spare uh, spring straps for fins i always carry two masks with me everywhere i go uh, my teaching slates and then of course i've got my instructor trainer teaching slates and a save a dive kit there as well hers is set up identical minus the teaching slates Coming up here on top, we'll start on the left. There's one of my cave helmets. Obviously, I got two lights mounted, and you can see where my camera mounts as well. I also use that helmet not just for overhead environment diving, but I also use it for salvage work. It keeps everything hands free, not only the camera, but the lights as well, so I really like it. I got a slew of dry bags. This is by far nowhere near all the dry bags. These are just the ones I leave here. I actually leave one in my truck. That's kind of my what I call my go bag. It keeps my uh, computer that I teach with and a couple uh, paperwork and things like that for students, so that one stays in my truck but I love the dry bags especially when you work around water all the time it keeps everything nice and dry here are several uh, different reg sets that we own. This is not all of them. These are just the ones that we use on a daily basis. This one is actually not a reg. This is spare hoses. It's got about 30 or 40 different spare hoses in it, so I can pull them out anytime I need it. This is my side mount system here. It's the Mares 25XR DR system. Um, these are two identical Mares Epic 82Xs. So it's 82X first stage with the Epic second stages, both primary and alternate. Um, and they're, they're virtually identical. It's this one has extremely short hoses. The custom length hoses built on this one for my daughter. That's her personal rig. And then mine's just standard length hoses on that one. 
The rig behind it in blue, that's my public safety rig. It's an Ocean Reef first stage with a Marias MV second stage, um, and then the uh, quick disconnect primary hose, which feeds into my full face mask. This is the only one that actually has an air integrated computer. Everything else has um, pressure gauges. That one actually has air integrated because I use it for public safety diving. And if I ever get into a situation where I got to test fine core, I can just download one computer, not two or three, but one computer and take in that information and it works great for me. Um, in public safety diving, if I'm in a quick deploy situation, typically if I take off my watch or something like that, I don't have time to put it back on. So this works great. I put my gear together. I have every bit of information that I need. So that's why I do that. And it's the Marias Puck Air, which I no longer make, but that's the computer choice on it. That one right there, of course, is my ice diving rig. That is the Navy Abyss 22. I would still say the Navy Abyss 22 is the third best breathing rig on the market. The first one being the Marez Abyss. The second one, I'm still kind of up in the air on what I like. Moving on down, just a little storage shelf here. I used to keep all my battery chargers there, and I had a whole slew, and I decided I don't need that many. I just need a couple of little chargers over there. So this kind of shelf's open in the air right now is what's going to go there. But moving over to try to finish this tour out quickly here, I'm going to start up top. Dry suit, dry suit, dry suit, and dry suit. Yes, I own four dry suits. OS Systems TELUS front entry, Scuba Force Expedition front entry. This is an OS Systems horizontal front entry search and recovery. And then my pride and joy is my neoprene comfort zone scuba dry suit. So yes, tri-laminate, tri-laminate, bi-laminate, neoprene. I use all of the above. The only thing I don't use because I hate them with a passion and that is a vulcanized rubber suit. But I have different suits for different purposes and I use them all. This one's actually retired out. It's become completely delaminated so I no longer use the TELUS model. It's more or less a teaching aid now for when I teach dry suit courses. But I still keep it up there. I still use the bag keep undergarments and stuff like that in. But moving over to the rack itself, I have just an extra dry suit hanger here. So this is for travel. And then I usually have two dry suits hanging. One's for work, one's for fun and play. And so I usually have two hanging up. I haven't actually did a, a work job here in about a week or so. So that's why they're all dry and put up there. Accessory rack here. I've got several different boots, gloves, hoods. They're all pretty much self-explanatory. They're all my hoods, with the exception of one, are dry suit hoods, and we'll look at each one individually. This one here is a. Um, sorry, forgot my frame of thought. This is an OS Systems. Uh, custom built hood for me and then on the back I use a comfort zone scuba full face mask hood and if you've never seen a full face mask hood basically it's got this glide skin material so that the full face mask can seal the it instead of your face. I currently only own one set of boots. These are the Marias Trilastic 5 mil size 8. Uh, I need to get me another pair. They've wore out. Matter of fact I usually have two pairs so I'll probably buy two pair here coming up very soon. Um, these are Seasoft 3 mil gloves. I love these Stealth 3s. Um, they've been around for several years. I also had the same pair with Kevlar lining, and I really like those as well for salvage work. If I wasn't wearing dry gloves with one of those, I'd wear the Kevlar version. Don't know what happened to them. I think somebody took them. Moving on over, one of my series of undergarments here. This is just a Polar Tech or Polar Fleece jumpsuit. From divers from the 90 will understand what Polar Tech and Polar Fleece is. Really good stuff. This is a two layer fleece suit. I love this jumpsuit. It's very um, agile. It allows me to move. It's got a lot of stretch in it, but it keeps me warm as well. I also have a pinnacle, really, really thick undergarments, about that thick. It's kind of a pain in the butt to wear. And then I also have an undergarment that goes with that scuba force up there as well. Moving on over is my Marias Graflex 5 mil suit. Uh, absolutely love this. This is size large. This is not a semi-dry, but it works just like a semi-dry because all the seams are basically sealed as well. So where it's sewed together, they actually come in here and glue the seams. And I love this suit. One cool thing about this suit here is it's got this fleece or this liner in here that not only is really, really soft, but it kind of absorbs any of that moisture that does get in the suit, and it, it basically keeps it off of you. So I really, really like this liner of the suit. And hashtag too much information here, but I don't wear nothing under my wetsuits. And with that being said, that is very, very comfortable against my skin. So I really love that. Moving on over to my three mils, I have two identical Mares three mil suits. And why do I have two? And it's because I go through them so quickly. I usually get a new wetsuit about every three months because the pool that we use for training has so much chlorine in them. A suit will actually go from this dark gray color here to this white color within a matter of about three months. Once it starts doing that, you break down the elasticity of the suit and it's pretty much useless after that. Moving on over, I have a Marez 543. I love this suit. 543 simply means it's a hybrid. It's five here on the chest, 
four from the shoulders to the elbows and threes down, and then, of course, four from the hips uh, down to the knees and then three from there. Sorry about the dog barking in the parking lot. Uh, we live on a farm here, and my dog goes crazy all the time. But Marius no longer makes this. Marius, if you're watching this video, please bring the 543 and 864 back. Those were great suits. Everybody liked them as well, so definitely bring those back. Coming on over, this is the only hood. Yes, this is a hood. It's not just a vest. It's a hooded vest. It's the only hood I wear that's technically got a bib. I guess the vest itself is a bib. I hate bibbed hoods, but I really love this. This little hooded vest is a core warmer that I wear either under my 5 mil, my 3 mil, or my other 5. And if I need a hood, I pull it up. If I don't, I pull it down, and I don't have to worry about it getting in the way of anything. What I primarily use it for is if I'm teaching open water, and I know I'm going to be going through the thermocline, say, on an um, open water dive or whatnot, say if I'm in a quarry or even in the lake, I love wearing that under my suit because... I can pull the hood up when I need it, take the hood off when I don't need it, and it works really well. Typically, we're not below the thermocline very long on open water dives, so that comes in very handy. And it's just an extra layer of warmth as well. It has the same fleece lining that the uh, Graflex has, so I absolutely love that hooded vest. Then I've got a slew of rash guards that I hardly ever wear anymore. These are just from older, older style uh, rash guards and stuff. Some are neoprene, some are spandex, nothing fancy. And then I have a Marius 3 mil shorty. It's what I usually fly to the tropics with. Um, so it comes in really handy there as well. And then of course the last suit is a Marez Inflex 2.5 female suit and this is size 4. Don't worry, it's not mine. It's actually my daughter's. Uh, that's her brand new wetsuit. She, I'm very proud of her. Not only has she matured as a diver, um, or as a dive student, she has actually matured as a young lady as well, and she just graduated from a little kid's wetsuit into a full-fledged woman wetsuit. Now, it's still just a slightly big on her, but it still fits her in all the areas that it needs to to keep her warm. Jumping on over to the BCs, you can see I got a slew of BCs. You'll also notice that they're all backplate and wings. I got two side mount, and the rest are just standard backplate and wings. And we'll talk about the little guy on the end here at the end. But starting with the Subgravity Diamond 2.0 uh, side mount system, I love this system. It's got a little bit stiffer webbing than, than your typical webbing, uh, which can be uncomfortable, but it's bulletproof. I've never been able to tear this guy up, and I've had it in some very extreme situations. I love the bladder on this. The shape of the bladder of the Diamond is perfect for side mount. It puts the lift exactly where you need it, so I absolutely love that. I have graduated up to the Marez XR side mount system. Now, when you purchase this guy, you can get it in two different forms you can get the what they call the light duty or the heavy duty basically it's just the size of the bladder and whether you get steel rings or aluminum rings but you can also custom build them now I purchased the kit and took off the items I didn't need but you can buy the individual components and build it up however you need it and they are virtually set up the same way so you'll notice that on the left shoulder of each I got my line cutter so forth and so on spare double enders where I need them spare flashlights where I need them so they are virtually set up identical I can literally just grab and go dive and not have to worry about swapping stuff out. Come down to the waist strap on each course. I'll have cutting tools and stuff like that. I also have an accessory pouch here that I keep a spare cave reel, two spare jump reels, and then I have a spare SMB, a spare mask, um, slates, and I've also got my line errors and cookies and things like that. Now that is the only thing that if I am switching back over to the diamond, I'll just simply unclip this and put it on the diamond and I'm good to go. Moving over to my primary teaching rig. This is a Marez backplate and wing from their Marez XR line. I do have a soft plate or soft pad on all my hard plates. On the soft plates, I don't, but on all the hard plates, I do. And it's virtually identical to all the other ones as far as how is it set up. So we'll start at the top. We've got a cutting tool up here. I use the shears. Over here on the right shoulder, I have a spare flashlight, Marez XR, same ones that I wear on the K helmet. Spare working double ender. Coming on down, I have an SMB and reel. This is the Marez all-in-one system. I really like it because it kind of keeps your reel nice and protected there. Um, on the left side, of course, I'm going to have another cutting tool. It's another uh, line cutter. And then, of course, I also have a spare knife as well. And then, of course, my fins of choice are the Marez Avanti Quattros. I've had these fins for probably about six years now. Absolutely love these fins. Um, if you are an Avanti Quattro fan, you'll understand what I mean by that. On the back, of course, I just have two standard trim pouches that I use for those two five-pounders when I need about 15 pounds with a dry suit. Moving over, this is my daughter's backplate and wing. 
So it is set up identical to mine with the exception of it is a soft plate versus a hard plate. Um, but everything else is set up. I still got to get her a spare light, which we'll put over here for. Her. Um, but it is set up identical to mine. Her fins of choice are the Marez Excite Pro. Not only has she graduated from kids wetsuits over to the full adult wetsuit, she's also in a full adult fin as well. I would have got her the Aventi Quattros. Unfortunately, they do not make them in an extra small. She's got to have an extra small. So there you go. I am going to be changing out her bungee straps for her. She told me the other day that she really wanted the spring straps. She wanted something a little bit more heavy duty, so I will be changing that out for her as well. Um, this is a 22-pound bladder for her. My primary teaching rig is a 22-pound bladder. The bladder on that system over there is a 22-pound bladder, but this one over here that I'm fixing to show you is actually a 34-pound bladder. Moving on over to that. It is another Marez backplate and wing. This is my public safety and salvage backplate and wing. I've had this thing since they came out with the XR lines and absolutely love it. Like I said, it does have a 34 pound bladder on it versus a 22 pound because I need the extra lift. I'm typically wearing heavier steel tanks with that and I need a couple extra um, lift capacity with it. Everything is still set up identical. Cutting shears over there, flashlight, uh, spare double working ender. I also have my 50 pound lift bags pre-attached. If you've not seen the video on how to do that, I'll link it below. Uh, coming down to the waist strap, once again, everything's set up identical. I have a line cutter here. This is the adjustable line cutter, not the ceramic version. And then of course I have a spare knife. And then I also have a spare cave reel, same thing that I keep in my pouch there, but a spare cave reel. And I usually have two SMBs and two spare reels. The cave reel is meant for search and recovery purposes. And then of course the SMBs and um, reels there, the spools are meant so that I can mark stuff underwater and shoot it to the surface. Fins of choice for public safety diving and for salvage work are the Marez Power planas, absolutely love these fins. They're very, very powerful. Uh, they're a precision fin, so I can literally turn on the dime if I'm doing a helicopter kick or something like that. Um, so I really love these fins. They're solid rubber, they are bulletproof. And for the type of diving that I do, they work very, very handy um, to last when I'm really putting my gear through crap. Um, Trim pouches here on the back, once again, it's a five pound plate. If I need 15 pounds for a dry suit, throw a five pounder there, five pounder there, and boom. Balanced rig, all of our rigs, with the exception of my daughter's, are balanced rigs. Now, hers is a balanced rig. However, I do have quick release weights here on the side for her. They're just excess scuba weight pouches, and she can just basically pull up, pull down, weights pop out during an emergency. But outside of that, all the systems are balanced. Let's look at this last guy, and I'll talk about the importance of this. This was the first BCD I ever owned in 1988. It belonged to my mother. I got it from her, and of course, she got it used in the early 80s as well when she first started diving. And I keep it up here for a couple of reasons. One, my daughter just graduated from this over to her brand new backplate and wing system. And so I leave it up there just to remind her where it is that she came from and to pay homage to my family because she is a fourth generation diver. And just to let us know, hey, this system still works. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this system here. I've kept it in good working order throughout the years. My daughter's kept it in good working order through her scuba ranger programs. And you know what? If you take good care of your gear, your gear will take good care of you. So that's literally hung up just as a reminder of how well your gear will last if you take good care of it. So that's the only reason we leave that up there. But guys, that's it. That is my personal dive locker. I got a little Engel uh, 85 quart cooler there that we throw drinks in when we go somewhere. But that's it. That's my personal dive locker here at the house. It is a little bit different than what we have at the shop. Each morning when I get up, I pull my truck out of the garage. I grab the equipment that I need. I throw it in the box. I put it up in the truck with the tanks that I need. And then I head off to work or head off to a salvage job or whatever it is. But that's it, guys. That is my personal dive locker. I know that a lot of you have asked, hey, how do you do your gear? And I keep telling you that I'm going to get around to it, but I finally have. Guys, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. If you got any questions, put it down in the comment section below. Leave me a comment down below how your dive locker is set up. And if you see something that I could change to make this better, please put it down there so that I can learn from you. I love making these videos so that you can learn from us, but we, to be honest with you, love learning from you as well. But guys, if you did like the video, big thumbs up. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.